Hello, everybody. Hola, hola a todos. ¿Cómo están? How are you doing? Well, I'm so happy to have you here again for the second episode of Spanish with Carla, which means with me. So I hope you had a wonderful week. And uh, I hope that you had a minute or two to um, to check and, and remember and review what we learned last week. Remember, this is not this is not like a very formal class. This is just a way to learn Spanish, having fun, taking it easy. Um, again, I need to disclaim, remind you that I'm not a Spanish teacher. I am just a Spanish native speaker, and. Um, I love languages. I think that the languages are amazing. I'm trying to learn uh, Portuguese, French, and Italian myself. It's a little complicated, you know, but I'm doing my best, you know. So um, I want to remind you that last week we did, of course, the numbers. We did the vowels and we did the alphabet. And uh, this week... I just want to clarify one little thing real fast. Believe me, I'm not going to get you all stressed out about grammar yet. Not yet. But uh, I do want to tell you that um, on the questions that we learned last week, you remember the questions? Como, cuando, que, all those things, right? Okay, so there is one thing. When you ask the question, when you use the word donde to say where is... The bathroom, right? Donde está el baño? When you when you are actually writing that question, you need to add something that is an accent, okay, in Spanish. So the reason why I don't want to get into that is because that can be a little complicated, and this is too early for you. I want you to feel comfortable with what we are doing. Focus on the pronunciation. Focus on learning how to speak, okay? Can I tell you a secret? So I was living in the United States for about seven years before I actually learned how to write the words in English. This is honest truth. And like I told you last week, I'm still learning after almost 24 years. I'm still learning every day. So like I said, just take it easy. We're going to get there. And, and I want to give you the grammar really, really like in little small doses so you don't get frustrated. Okay, because... Yeah, it can be a little bit, not a lot. So let's start with, um, uh, since I'm sure you remember last week, and let's focus on the questions because they are going to help us form very important phrases, okay? So what's going to happen when, say, you take a cruise to Cancun or whatever place you want to go, right? And then you need to ask questions, important questions. So I made me like a little cheat sheet of important words that I thought you might need. If you uh, want to add more words, then I will be able to give you, not this episode, but next episode, I'm going to be able to give you um, a blog or portal where you can actually send us your suggestions and I will be happy to create um, a vocabulary list for you based on your needs, okay? Uh, and that can also be helpful for other people. So let's start with the basics, okay? The basics would be, for example, you know that no... When somebody asks you something, you want to say no, it's the same word, and it's spelled exactly the same. N-O, it just doesn't sound no. It sounds no. Simple, easy. You don't need to, like, extend the O. It's just no, cold, and that's it. Now, yes, you say C, okay? S-I, simple and easy. So, do you want to drink C? Do you want to go to sleep? No. You see what I mean? So it's super easy the way um, the way you're going to remember that. Okay. Uh, so no, see and no, yes and no. Now, another one, super important. Okay. When you're going to ask for something and it's very, very important in, in Hispanic culture in general. Okay. Uh, just remember, please and thank you. Everybody is going to love you and respect you and care for you and invite you back and feed you a bunch of stuff. Oh, come and eat enchiladas and this. 
they actually appreciate so much that please and thank you. Sometimes I feel like in this world, new days is a little forgotten. <laughs> I don't know, may, um, but it's very appreciative in there. So basically, if uh, appreciated in there. So basically, when you ask for something, say you want to say, can I have a soda, please? So please, let's focus on only on the word please. It's going to be in Spanish. It's going to be two words. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, hurry up. Get a pencil, get a marker, pause it until you find it. Isn't that when you need a pen, you can never find it? Yep. That's the story of my life, you guys. So, okay. So, ready. So, por favor is two words. Okay. It's going to be P as in Paul, O as in Oscar, R as in rabbit, space, F as in Frank, A as in apple, V as in Victor, O as in Oscar, R as in rabbit. Por favor. That means please. Okay? Now let's go with the other part of the equation, right? The magic word. So that's thank you. Now, thank you, you see in English is two words, right? Well, in Spanish, it's only one word. And you can say gracias. Gracias. And uh, you spell it G-R-A-C-I-A-S. Are you ready for the more detailed spelling? Okay, grab your pen again. G as in giraffe. R as in Robert. A as in apple. C as in cat. I as in igloo. A as an apple, S as in Sam. Gracias. So please and thank you. Por favor y gracias. Very important and uh, to use in your interactions when you go, you know, for a cruise or when you go to a, how about a Mexican market or a Mexican restaurant and you want to, you know, show off. Oh, por favor. Oh my God. He knows how to speak English, uh, Spanish or, oh, chicken she, she knows some Spanish, right? So it's it's good, you know, if you if you learn a few words that probably, you know, be helpful for you so you can interact and start feeling better about speaking another language. You know, I always say, I think that uh, when I started feeling scared of messing it up is when I started learning how to speak more English. I just didn't care. You know, if I said it wrong, I still said it. And I always ask people will correct me if I say it wrong. And and that's just, that's the only way. You just jump on it, do it. Even if you don't say it perfect, it doesn't matter. Don't let anything stop you, okay? Um. So since now we already have yes, no, and please and thank you, which is pretty cool. So we got those new, you know, four words. Those are, are being super easy, okay? So get ready. Um, now, I want to also touch on some greetings, okay? And then we are going to learn some important words that are going to be helpful. But let's do some greetings right now. And I'm going to teach you a little bit on the hello, good morning, all that, okay? so. Same as in English, we have hello, of course, right? And that's hola. Very easy, simple. Um, again, is oh, you know what? This is important. So now that we're going to talk about hola. So hola is spelled H as in hotel, O as in Oscar, L as in Larry, A as in apple. So... The difference between English and Spanish, or one of the many, right, is that in Spanish, the H doesn't sound, it's silent, okay? So as you can hear, even though you say you see that it's spelled H-O-L-A, you're not saying hola, you're saying hola, and that is perfectly correct, okay? The only times in which the H sounds is if it's combined with another consonant. Let's not get into that just yet, 
Okay? So, hello, hola. There's another more informal way. You see how, like, when we say hi, well, you can just say, in Spanish, you can just say, hey, just, you know, just a, hey. or you can just say, hey, kind of like what we do in English, but that's more an imported terminology. You know what I mean? That's not really uh, what, what, uh, it's not a, really a Spanish word. So also, other than, okay, so this is important. So when you call, okay, you might hear a bunch of different things when you call on the phone and somebody in one of those Latin American countries, Mexico, Argentina, whatever, uh, when you call, you might hear bueno. Okay, bueno means good. I don't know why, but most of people in Mexico answer the phone as bueno. You know, I guess it, it probably comes or is related to the greetings that we're going to touch in a little bit. And when I tell you, you might, yeah, I, I'm, you might think, yeah, it's probably related to it. Basically, when you answer, you're saying, I mean, basically, it's good, right? Good? I mean, I don't know. It, it really doesn't make any sense, you guys, but that's the way most of the people in Mexico answer the phone. Bueno. Uh, bueno is spelled B-U-E-N-O. B as in boy. E. I mean, U as an umbrella, E as an elephant, N as an Nancy, O as an Oscar. Bueno. You can also hear alo, okay? And even though them is the same, they're trying to say hello, kind of like in English, but they spell it A-L-O. Is that right? No. Actually, I don't even think that's a word in Spanish. It's just probably just things that people say, um, but it's just spelled like that. A. L as in uh, Larry, O as in Oscar, you know, so alo, you might hear that too. And that's, that probably would be easier to pick up because it's similar to hello. There's another places like Argentina where people, when they answer the phone, they just say hable. Hable means speak. That's kind of more, to me, that makes more sense, right? To, to tell people speak. A little demanding, bossy, right? But still. So, hable, again, this is another example on the silent H, okay? So, it's spelled H as in hotel, A as in apple, B as in boy, L as in lorry, E as in apple. And that means hable. Do you realize how even though it has an H, it's silent? Hable. Speak, you know? Super bossy. So, I wouldn't answer the phone like that probably, but... Just This is just uh, for your information. So when you hear the phone, you don't go like, what? What are they trying to say? Yeah. Okay. So now let's go a little more formal on, or very appreciative, right? Like when you say to somebody, they don't, they don't only get a thank you, but they get a thank you very much. Okay. So in Spanish, it's two words. Muchas gracias. Muchas Gracias. This means, okay, muchas means plenty, a lot. Okay? So basically, let's spell muchas. Are you ready? M as in Mary, U as in umbrella, C as in cat, H as in hotel, A as in apple, S as in Sam. Gracias. We already spelled it, so I'm just going to fast spell it for you. G-R-A-C-I-A-S. Muchas gracias. That means thank you very much. That's when somebody did something awesome for you, and it doesn't, it's not enough with just saying, okay, thank you. Okay? Now, the answer, okay? So what happens when somebody tells you thank you? How are you going to say you're welcome? Is also two words. Okay, de nada, de nada. So, de is spelled D as in dog, E as in elephant. Space, nada, which means nothing. N as in Nancy, A as in apple, D as in dog, A as in apple. De nada. One variation to this, you know what could be? They, some people might say, por nada, por nada. And let's just spell por, which is P as in Paul, O as in Oscar, R as in rabbit. Remember, it means the same. If you, if you actually want to translate it, 
directly, like exactly, then probably you, you, it wouldn't mean you're welcome. It would mean it's nothing, right? It's nothing. That's basically what, what they're saying when they're saying de nada. It, you know, it was nothing. Um, uh, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's basically the way you say it, right? Uh, of course, you can also use other expressions, more, you know, formal, which we're not going to spell today because I want to get to the other words that I want you to know. But just to give you an example, it might be that you say, uh, when somebody says, Oh, thank you very much for helping me with my assignment. And then you say, Oh, my pleasure. Okay, you can say the same in Spanish. Fue un placer. O el placer es mío. You see, it starts getting a little more complicated, but once your ear starts getting used to listening to the language, believe me, it is going to be easier for you to pick up the words here and there. So then um, I know that most of the people that speak Spanish, and actually, of course, people that speak English, whoever speaks on their, on their native language, right? We tend to speak fast. Oh, my God, you don't want to hear me speak in Spanish. You probably couldn't pick up a word. I speak like da, 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 super fast, really. And, uh, and it, is, it is a little silly because uh, I... You know, several times people go like, da, 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 and I'm like, yeah, sorry. You just, I just get comfortable and start speaking super fast. But like I said, when you start learning more words, your ears are going to start getting used to it. Um, and can I just say this? A great way to learn Spanish. I mean, watch the Mexican soap operas. Even if you don't understand anything in the beginning, believe me, at some point, like I said, you're going to start picking up stuff, right? Or you can use, you can actually watch like the Spanish news or whatever. But the reason why I said the soap operas is because they're acting. So it's easier for you to pick up by context what is going on. The news is more like a robotic speak, you know, and so and so happened this. Of course, you can also see, I mean, if you're, if you, if you actually have some uh, vision, you can probably see the the video, whatever they're they're giving. But I just think that the soap operas are much easier because you can hear the emotion on the voice, so you know that they're you know upset or 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 just sad or you know whatever. It's just something when I started you know watching TV in English, it really opened up another world to me, and I didn't want to because I was like I'm not gonna understand anything. But eventually, eventually. I started picking up. I mean, honest, the honest truth is that the first time that I started watching something in English, I actually fell asleep because I couldn't understand anything. But like I say, little by little, you start picking up words and then you start getting the idea and everything. Okay, Carlita, like I said, I talk too much. So let's go into business again. Okay, so you remember what we did? No. Sí. Gracias. De nada. Por favor, muchas gracias. Okay, so you got all that. If you need to go back and, and check how you spell it, just push the rewind button and go and do that. Okay, so I picked up 10 words for you. So the first word that I pick up is hotel. In Spanish, super easy, okay? You're not going to struggle with this one. You spell it exactly the same way as you do in English. Now, what do you think is the only difference? Do you remember or did you already forget? What did I say about the H? Exactly. You don't have to pronounce the H. So in English, you say hotel. In Spanish, you say hotel. Even though the H is there, it's just there, silent. Hotel. But you spell it the same way as you spell it in English. H-O-T-E-L. Same exact spelling. Okay, so let's start building. Remember the questions? Remember I told you where? You ask, ¿dónde? Remember? Easy peasy. ¿Dónde está? Está means are or is, right? So, ¿dónde? You already know how to spell ¿dónde? Está. It's E as an elephant. S as in Sam. T as in tomato. A as an apple. Yes, he has an accent on that A. We're going to talk about that later on the podcast. In the meantime, just learn how to say it, all right? Donde 
está el, el means is giving the gender of the word hotel, right? So, el hotel. ¿Dónde está el hotel? El, you spell E as an elephant, L as in Larry. Remember, I'm giving you the spelling like a like a fast fact, so you have it. But if you don't feel like doing all the spelling, just learn how to say it. At the end of the day, if you're there trying to find your your hotel, if you can say "Donde está el hotel," anybody's gonna be able to answer and at least point you to the direction you need to go. Okay, so spelling is there for whoever needs it and wants it. But if you don't, don't feel discouraged. Just learn how to say it, all right? Okay, so we got the first word, you know. The second one is going to be taxis, okay? That's pretty much the same word as well, and you spell it exactly the same way. And why did I put these words if they spell the same? Because this is basically a free point that you have already, okay? This is a free point. This is, you already know how to spell taxis. And uh, and that's exactly what you're going to do when you're there. You can actually go and say, ¿Dónde está el taxi? This is when you're asking for one taxi. Normally in Spanish, because you know, when when you're going to find a taxi, normally you have like a bunch of them. So you can also say, Están to make it plenty or more than one, right? Or you can actually, and, and you can say, ¿Dónde están? So the same as that word, but with an N at the end. Los to make it plural and to make it masculine. Los taxis. But if you go and say, ¿Dónde está el taxi? They're going to know exactly what you mean. Okay, I'm just teaching you the right way, just so, so you know it. But if you forget, oh, how was it when it was plural? No, don't worry about it. Just say, ¿Dónde está el taxi? And they're going to point you right to the direction where it should be. Okay, so let's let's just, ¿Dónde están? E-S-T-A, and just add an N, meaning plural, right? Los, L as in Larry, O as in Oscar, S as in Sam, Taxis. ¿Dónde están los taxis? So remember, ¿dónde está el hotel? ¿Dónde están los taxis? Easy peasy, right? Lemon squeezy. Okay, now this one is a word that you probably don't know yet, but you're going to need it. You need to learn this one, okay? The next word is baño. Everybody needs a bathroom. Come on. And if you cannot find it and nobody can understand what you mean, that's going to be a desperate moment. I don't want you to be on that predicament. So let's learn the word baño. B as in boy, A as in apple. And then this word, remember I told you when we were talking on the alphabet or about the alphabet? Ñ or ñ. And this is the sound that... Um, I was reading something and they said that it basically makes the sound as the N and Y together. Uh, so I'm just going to give you that fact. I, to me, I just, I'm just teach you how to do it. Just do nya, 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 nya. And you get the sound right away. All right. So B as in boy, A as in apple, N, N, or N. And O as an Oscar, baño. And that means, of course, bathroom. Bathroom, toilet, whatever you want to call it. So it can be only to wash your hands or it can be to go to the bathroom. It doesn't matter. Not to take a shower for the most part. So basically, if you're in a restaurant and you need to use the bathroom to wash your hands or go to the bathroom, it's baño will cover it all. Okay? So same concept. Remember, all these words that I put together for you is you're going to pretty much use the same question for the most part. I'm going to give you a little challenge. Don't think it's going to be so easy peasy, okay? So, ¿dónde está el baño? ¿Dónde está el baño? Okay? So, the next word is also a free point, okay? And that's Restaurante, restaurante, which is pretty much when you say it in English, it's just restaurant, 
right? So it's very similar. Even the spelling is pretty much very similar. The only difference is at the end, you are going to have an E as an elephant. Everything is the same. Restaurant, E. You put an E at the end. And it's going to sound restaurante. Okay? Restaurante. So, same question that we learned. Remember, ¿dónde está el restaurante? ¿Dónde está el restaurante? I mean, I want you to remember these questions. I, I can tell you they are going to be really useful. And it is so easy because you are only using one question word. ¿Dónde? Where? Okay, so we can say, ¿Dónde está el hotel? ¿Dónde están los taxis? ¿Dónde está el baño? Very important. And ¿Dónde está el restaurante? And that covers restaurant or any place where you can eat. Okay, we can add more vocabulary for other type of businesses that you can find in Latin America. But for right now, restaurant or restaurante will cover most of the needs. Okay. Another one easy point or a free point is going to be airport. Same exact thing that happens with restaurant and restaurante. Oh, well, actually, no. I'm going to spell airport for you. It's different. A few words, a few letters. So, aeropuerto. Aero, kind of like from air, right? Puerto. Aeropuerto. And as you can realize, it sounds a little kind of musical right there because you have a bunch of vowels, one after the other one, aeropuerto. So you're guessing right. You have an A as an apple, E as an elephant, R as in Robert, O as in Oscar, P as in Paul, U as an umbrella, E as an elephant, R as in rabbit, T as in tomato, and O as in Oscar, aeropuerto. It will be useful if you learn how to spell these words for the only reason that if, say, for example, you are with somebody or if you can if you can read the signs or if you are with somebody that can read the signs and they don't know, they have no clue about Spanish, you can actually tell them, okay, look for this, it's spelled so, so, and so. And... For the most part, if you go to places like Cancun and Cozumel and stuff, you probably are going to find the signs in English and Spanish. However, if you want to be more adventurous and you want to go more to the less Americanized touristic areas, like center of, of the country or, you know, some villa, villages and stuff like that, then you're not going to find anything in English. So it's very useful to know how to say that. So, or even, you know, spell it. So, ¿dónde está el aeropuerto? ¿Dónde está el aeropuerto? Okay. Then the next one is going to be casa de cambio. I know that sounds complicated. It's really not. But this is the place where you can exchange, you know, your dollars for pesos. Although most of the places that you go that are more touristy, they're going to take your dollar. They're going to snatch it from your hands. But they're normally not going to give you as much as you would get if you would go to a casa de cambio. Casa means house. C as in cat. A as in apple. S as in Sam. A as an apple. Casa. Okay? So I'm thinking of an idea. Se me ocurre una idea. You can also say, tengo una idea. Casa. So you can use what you learned earlier. ¿Dónde está la casa? Okay? You can also say that. While learning the words, you know, casa de cambio, you are... You can learn another word, which is casa, which means home, house. Actually, house. Home has another word. So house. So casa. ¿Dónde está la casa? And you can use the same phrase to say de cambio. 
Basically, if you want to translate it exactly as it goes, it's house of change. That's actually what exactly would translate. But it's just a place where you go and exchange your dollars for pesos, okay? Or whatever coin. And, you know, if it's Spain, it's going to be euros or, you know, whatever. So, Casa, we already mentioned how to spell it. De is D as in dog, E as in elephant. Another space, cambio, which means change, C as in cat, A as in apple, M as in Mary, B as in boy, I as in igloo, O as in Oscar. Okay, another interesting word right here. So with learning Casa de Cambio, we are going to learn two more new words. And I know that it's probably going to be a little confusing, but you know what? I'm sure you're super mega smart and you're going to pick it up just fine. Okay. So again, casa means house de cambio. Cambio means change. Also, remember this. So when you pay in one of those countries, you pay with cash, then you are going to hear su cambio or tu cambio. What does that mean? That mean they want you to change or something? Called? No, that means they're telling you, here's your change. Okay? So, cambio, you are going to use it also on monetary transactions where when we are involving cash and there is some money coming back your way, right? So, don't forget, if you're paying and you gave them a 100 pesos bill and your whatever item you purchased was only 40 pesos, they're going to say, hey, señor, señora, amigo, you know, whatever word they use, to cambio. Just, they're going to just telling you, here's your money back, your change, okay? So we learn not only casa de cambio, we also know how to say cows, and we also learn how to say change. Yay! Isn't that cool, you guys? It's so cool. Okay, I hope this is not a lot of information, but remember that if there is something that you don't pick up, you can always push the rewind button and listen again. Besides, don't get used to the words being so easy, okay? I just wanted to make it easy today and, and found a lot of words that are similar, but next week is going to be a little more challenging, so get ready. Okay, so the next word is going to be doctor. Very important. We never want to think that when you go on vacations, you're going to get sick or anything, but many things can happen, you know, especially me. Oh, my God. I'm so allergic to uh, whatever chemicals the water has. And when I go and drink, like, say, tap water, I get that you know what all the time. So it's always important to know how to ask for a doctor. And fortunately for you, it's so easy. It's the same exact word, and it's spelled exactly the same way. Doctor, you just need to change the way you say it. See how in English we we um, stress the first O, right? We say, can I have a doctor? That's the way we say it, right? In Spanish, you say, donde está un doctor? So your stress is going to be on your last O. Same word, same spelling, no accents or anything. You just stress the second O. You can also say, donde hay, which means basically the same, where is, it's just another way to say it. Instead of saying, está, you say, I, like H-A-Y, donde hay un doctor. That's another way to say it, again. If you say, donde está el doctor, anybody will understand that you need to see a doctor and you don't need to change the spelling of, of the, the phrases. I'm just showing you another way to say it. Donde hay, H-A-Y, un, which means a, right? It means it's, it's you and as in Nancy, doctor, okay? Donde hay un doctor. You can also use that. Easy peasy. The next one is going to be also a very easy peasy that actually is spelled the same way as you spell it in English. And it's a hospital. 
I'm not trying to be negative, you guys. I'm I'm just I just want you to be ready if hopefully nothing is gonna happen. But if it does, that's when you need those words and then you go, how do I say that? Right? And this is so easy for you to learn. Because you say same as like I say, same spelling, hospital, you're just gonna say it differently. Remember that the H doesn't sound it's silent. Hospital. Hospital. Remember, same thing that we did with doctor. You say hospital, right? So you stress the O. In this case, in Spanish, we stress the last A. Hospital. Would it matter if you accidentally say hospital? Yeah, they're still going to understand what you mean for the most part, right? But let's try to learn it with, you know, the way you stress it. It's going to make your life much easier. ¿Dónde está? El hospital. You can also say, same as we did with doctor, donde hay un hospital. Okay? Now, let's go with the next word. And this is important. The word is hora. Hora means hour. You can also use it when you want to ask, what time is it? Okay? Um, I'm... There is also another way to say time, but let's focus about hour right now because that's the one you're going to use the most, okay? So our hora is spelled H as in hotel, O as in Oscar, R as in rabbit, A as in apple. And again, the H is silent, okay? Hora, hora, hora. If you want to say one hour, you say Una hora. Remember the numbers? Because hora is considered, uh, uh, the gender is basically feminine. Then we say una hora. Okay? If you want to say more than one, tres horas. Then you just, we just add an S after the word hora, and it makes it plural. Okay? Now, what I want to teach you is another question word that we're going to use. And you're going to use it more um, for questions like this. Que, which means what, hora, es. Que, hora, es. Que, hora, es. What time is it? Like I said, the translation is not exact. There is another word to, to say time, but this is basically the meaning According to the context, this is exactly what it means. What time is it? ¿Qué hora es? You can go back to the first episode and find the spelling for qué. I, I'm just going to do a fast track on that uh, to, to help you in, on this. So it's going to be Q-U-E, and remember that U doesn't sound, and then hora, H-O-R-A-S. S is spelled E as an elephant, S as in Sam. And you need to remember that after all these questions, you're going to have a question mark. Actually, in Spanish, you have two question marks. You have the beginning question mark, which is the opposite as the one we use in English. Instead of the little kind of curvy thingy being on the bottom, it's on the top. So when I post the notes, I, I will show you. So when you when you actually are typing an email, you do need on the exclamation marks or in the question marks, we have a beginning question mark and an ending question mark. And same with the exclamation marks. Okay. But like I said, we wor we worry about that later. Right now we're only speaking, right? We're not writing emails. Um <laughs> so uh, no yet, right? Okay. So then we have what time is it and um and that's very important. Now, another one, I was going to actually show you the word to say telephone, right? Which is super easy. It's almost the same. But then I thought, well, most of people have a cell phone nowadays. So the word that I picked up as the last important word of the day, cha cha cha, -cha is actually charger. Because, yeah, if your phone is about to die, I mean, I think that we're going to be more in, in need of a charger than anything else, okay? Now, get your pen ready because this one is going to be a little harder to spell, okay? So this is going to be C as in cat, A as in apple, R as in Robert, 
G as in giraffe, A as in apple, D as in dog, O as in Oscar, R as in rabbit. Are you ready? Cargador. 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 Okay. The easiest way, again, if you already memorize the donde está o donde hay, I think it would be more appropriate to say donde hay un cargador. Okay. Donde hay un cargador. Where is a charger? That would be the easiest way, right? That, that you can actually that you can actually ask. I, I don't believe that saying, well, you can actually say too, donde esta el cargador. That would mean if you already, say you already have your charger and you're asking somebody that you know, this is not, you're not trying to get to borrow a charger from somebody else. You are actually asking somebody where is your own charger or their charger? This is somebody, this is a charger that already exists. You just want to locate it. I hope I'm making sense. So when you are going to say, ¿Dónde está el cargador? You are trying to locate a charger that you already have somewhere. You just misplaced it. When you want to find a charger, then you say, ¿Dónde hay un Cargador. Basically, where where can I find a charger? Where where is the charger? Like, you know, they might say, well, you know what, there's a gift shop right there, and you can find one there. Or hold on, let me see if I want my purse. Or you know what I mean? That's the difference. Okay, on this example with the charger. So don't worry if we got a little confusing. We're gonna touch back on that. We're gonna have several examples that we're gonna use. Um, to clarify every single situation, okay? So don't panic. Breathe in, breathe out. We're good. The important thing is that if you say, hey, cargador, they're going to know what you're talking about, okay? Remember, if you can't remember the whole thing, just remember like special words that you know that they're going to be important for you, okay? All right, so those are the 10 words that I thought they would be easy for the second episode and that they would be really useful if you are in a trip on uh, Mexico, Latin America, Spain, you know, whatever Spanish speaker speaking country. Another thing that I don't want to let go before I forget, you guys, um, it would be when you're asking for a charger also, do, would you want to ask somebody, do you have a charger, you know, by any chance? Do you have a charger? Easy, easy. Okay, you ready? Tienes, tienes, which means do you have or have. But because we are adding the S at the end, that means it's kind of making it do you have. And we're going to touch on that grammar later. So just remember it, remember it like that. Tienes un cargador? Do you have a charger? Tienes. T as in tomato, I as an igloo, E as an elephant, N as an Nancy, E as an elephant, S as in Sam. Tienes un, U-N, same word, cargador. Remember? Basically, you're saying, do you have a charger? Obviously, that I can borrow. I'm not going to go and spell the whole thing for you. I don't want to frustrate you, okay? So let's keep it on. Tienes un cargador. They're going to know that you mean... Can I borrow it? Okay. But we go and do the borrow in another episode. Okay. So basically, I believe that those 10 words that for the most part are easy and they spell almost the same way as they do in English. Um, I believe that this is going to make your life easier. It's going to be an easy way for you to practice how to locate important things, places, people, you know, items that you might need. And just remember, the two questions that we used today were donde, which means where, and que, which means what. Okay, that is very important. Um, I want to just 
uh, touch on a few more greetings before we go. I know um, it seems like the time flies, right? But uh, I'm just going to teach you how to say a very few, a couple of more greetings, and I'm going to let you go. We touch on the on the phone, how to say, you know, hello, uh, hello, bueno, hable, whatever. We know hello and hola, and we also, I want to teach you real fast, buenos dias. Buenos dias means good morning. Okay, so this is what I meant when I was saying that probably the way they answer the phone in Mexico when they say bueno, this might be related with this greeting. Because in, in Spanish, every time that you're going to say, it, as well as in English, it's always good, right? Good morning, good this, good that. So just remember, dia, let's remember the gender of the world, of the word. So it's buenos, which means it's good for the male gender of the words, because dia is, is, it has a, a male gender in Spanish. Okay. I know it's, it seems complicated, but you're going to get it. It's going to just, you know, stick to you as you speak more. So buenos dias. B as in boy, U as an umbrella, E as an elephant, N as in Nancy, O as an Oscar, S as in Sam. Buenos dias. D as in dog, I as an igloo with an accent, A as an apple, S as in Sam. Another variation that you might hear, some people say only buen dia. Basically, they don't say it like a plural. Do you realize how when you say buenos dias, it's a plural? It's talking about many good days, basically, right? But you don't really translate it like that. It's just the way they most of people say it. Now, the younger crowd, instead of saying buenos dias, they are more um, on uh, buen dia. Same is V as in boy, U, E as an elephant, N, space, D as in dog, I as an igloo with an accent, A as an apple. Buen dia. Only one day. Right? So you can hear those two for good morning. Okay? Buenos dias or buen dia. It is perfectly polite to just respond the same way. If somebody tells you buenos dias, you can respond simply buenos dias. That's it. The second one that I want to teach you is buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. It is the same spelling on the word buenos. The only difference is that you put an A rather than an O at the end. Buenas, B-U-E-N-A-S, buenas tardes. Let me spell tardes for you. T as in tomato, A as in apple, R as in rabbit, D as in dog, E as in elephant, S as in Sam. Buenas tardes. Okay, so there is one tricky thing about buenas tardes. Um, buenas tardes in Spanish can mean anytime after noon, right? Anytime between 12 and until, I would say, until when there is light in the sky. Uh, believe me, I'm not, you know, this is just the way, I, the best way I can explain it to you. Um, so if it's late outside, you can say, uh, buenas tardes. Uh, and that can mean, buenas tardes can mean buenas tardes as per two in the afternoon or as per five, six in the evening. Okay. And uh, it would work for the whole, basically, afternoon, evening. It would work. So buenas tardes. There is other young crowd also that says buena tarde, which is the same concept, but that's much less common. And that's just the way it is. Most majority of people are going to say buenas tardes, and you just respond back buenas tardes. Okay? Now, the last that I want to show you today or that I want to tell you today is actually buenas noches. Different from English. Um, uh, or then, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think that in English, pretty much when you say good night is when you're actually going to sleep. Good night. And you're going to sleep. In Spanish, buenas noches can be also a way to say hello at nighttime. 
it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to sleep. Bye. You see what I mean? So this is the difference. So buenas noches. Imagine you are walking into a restaurant around six, seven in the in the evening when the sky is already dark. It's or it's you know dusk. It's it's already getting dark. So it's kind of nighttime already. But you just walk into a restaurant and you see somebody you know. So it's very correct and it's the normal thing to go and say, hey, buenas noches. And they respond, buenas noches to you because you're just getting there. That is absolutely correct. Okay, that's the way that that you do it in in, uh, Latin American countries and Spain as well. People eat really late on, on, on Hispanic countries. I used to eat dinner at eight or nine at night and that was normal. When I when I got here, like eating at five to me was like, oh my god, I'm hungry by seven or eight already. So get used to that or be prepared. Uh, if you want to eat around dinner time here, that's called the merienda, which is kind of a snack, kind of an evening snack. And we're gonna go and spell that word in another episode. So let's just spell Buenos Noches so I can let you go. Uh, are you still awake or hey hey wake up? So <laughs> let's do buenas noches. Buenas is the same. B as in boy, U. E as an elephant. N as in Nancy. A as an apple. S. Buenas. And then the second word is going to be noches. This is one of the words where the H sounds because it's accompanied by, you're going to see it. N as in Nancy. O as in Oscar. C as in cat. H as in hotel. E as an elephant, S as in Sam. Buenas noches. So remember, if you just walk into a restaurant, swimming pool, office, whatever it is, and it's anywhere after six in the evening, and it's a little dark outside, you say, you can say, hola, buenas noches. That's, you're saying hello. Remember, I guess, good evening. You can say, but in, in Spanish, it doesn't matter. You can say buenas noches. That doesn't mean you're going to sleep. I'm going to show you what it means I'm going to sleep, okay? So hola, buenas noches means, hey, I'm saying hi, and it's it's nighttime, right? It's dark in the sky, okay? If you finish eating your dinner and you're going to, you know, say goodbye, you're going to go home or to your hotel or whatever, then you say buenas noches, adios. So same word. Isn't that easy? All you need to remember is buenas noches. And you can use the same to say hi or to say bye. Hola, buenas noches. And when you leave, buenas noches, adios. If you are going to sleep and you have roommates or people that are there with you, you say hasta mañana, which means see you tomorrow, right? It's very common. And I'm going to show you how to spell that next episode because I'm pretty sure we are almost running out of time. But adios, I do want to spell it which is goodbye or bye. A as an apple, D as in dog, I as an igloo, O as an Oscar, S as in Sam. Buenas noches, adios. You can also use adios whenever you leave at any time of the day or if you want to stop a conversation, whatever. That, that just means bye, adios, okay? That's a more, like a more cutting uh Bye. And next episode, we are going to talk about all these things. See you tomorrow. How are you doing? Um, nice to meet you. So I am excited about uh, teaching you all these questions. And I am asking my uh, product uh, producer if there is a way that we can have um, one of the sessions where probably you can interact with us. Um, I don't know. I'm not promising anything, you guys. No promesas, because I don't know. Uh, but um, I am going to try my best because I think that would be really fun. Maybe after the holidays with the new year and uh, we can do a review and then we can have an interactive um, podcast where you can actually participate, ask questions, you know, show off all the Spanish you're learning and all that good stuff. So um, I want to thank you so, so much for being here today and, uh, and for listening. And uh, we appreciate you listening, supporting. Please help us by sharing 
the podcast with anybody that would like to learn Spanish in a more relaxed way. Not, it's probably not very structured way, but believe me, it is a very easy way to learn. And, and the best part about it is that when we are able to, we can get all your feedback and we can actually, um, gather information from you to make it more your way to listen to what your needs are. And we can actually make it more uh, adapted a little more to what you need. Okay. So. Once again, thank you so much. Remember, remember, don't ever forget. Stop learning and start dying, okay? So always, always try to keep learning something new. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a, and a great week. And I will talk to you in about 10, 7 days. You have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Hasta luego.